Let's take a look at the physics behind the bungee jump scene in the James Bond film, Golden Eye. If you haven't seen it, here's a link to it on YouTube. But here's the important pictures. Here's James Bond at the top of this uh, dam that's in uh, Switzerland. And he jumps. He's going to attack the power station below. And he's in free fall for a while. And then the bungee starts pulling up on him. As he approaches the uh, roof of the power station, he shoots a gun that fires a hook into the roof, and then he is in static equilibrium. He holds on to the gun, and he is still, even though this bungee cord is pulling up on him, and he's able to hold on to this gun. And so the question is, could he hold on to that gun? How much force would be required? And so physics and a few assumptions can answer that. First, we're going to assume James Bond's mass is about 100 kilograms. That's reasonable given his equipment. But if you continue watching the movie, you'll see he has about 1,000 kilograms of ammunition. But we'll ignore that. Uh, you can look up the height of the dam. Uh, just Google golden eye bungee jump. And it's about 220 meters. And so the question is, how much of that is the length of the bungee? And how much of that is the stretch distance? And so Bond starts off up here. And so bungee cords typically stretch three to four times their length. We want a real stretchy bungee cord uh, so it minimizes the force on bonds. So we're going to assume four times the length. And so that means if we divide the uh, total distance by four, we find out the bungee itself is 55 meters long and subtract that from 220 and we get the stretch distance. And so now we can use conservation of energy to find the force constant of the bungee. And we are going to assume this is a bungee that obeys Hooke's law. In other words, the force is linear with the stretch distance. And so conservation of energy says the initial equals the final. We are neglecting air resistance. That would actually uh, make this easier to do if we uh, included air resistance. And the initial energy is all potential. We'll say the height is zero at the lowest part of the bungee jump. And the final energy is all elastic potential energy. And so gravitational potential is MGH, elastic potential 1 half kx squared, and solving for K, and put in 100 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and 220 um, meters, the total change in height, over 165 squared, 165 meters, you end up with 16 newtons per meter. Now, is that reasonable? Well, it's pretty low for a bungee cord. They're typically closer to 100. But since Bond has Q making his equipment, we're sure Q could make a stretchy bungee cord that's also strong for James Bond. Now we need to figure out the force. And so this would be the tension in Bond's arm uh, where he's holding the gun. And so first, the free body diagram reveals there's the upward pull of the bungee the downward pull of this tension in his arm, but there's also his weight. Uh, we're assuming static equilibrium, which is pretty reasonable if you watch the clip. And so we'll make up positive and then apply Newton's second law. Some of the force is equal ma, the acceleration is zero. And so we have the force from the spring, kx, or the bungee cord, minus the tension, minus the weight. So solving for the tension, it's the upward pull of the bungee minus Bond's weight. And so that comes out to 1,660 newtons, or about 373 pounds. And somebody like James Bond who works out, I think we could conclude he could hold the gun with that much force. Uh, I don't know about that little hook, though. We'll leave that up to Q. Uh, for more analysis, see Bond Bungee Jump Part 2.